Hello my dear friends welcome back to the channel and this is your friend Dr Suresh Anvi in our last video we learned about the various hand pieces the burr design and the abrasives and today we are covering the two important remaining aspect that is the mechanism of cutting with the blade and abrasives and the hazards during the high speed cutting in dentistry i am sure most of the students don't like to read this chapter from the book but please note this topic has some of the very important mcqs which will commonly appear in your various exams like neat mds and bde or middle east exams there are two important terminologies when we try to understand the cutting mechanism the first being the cutting effectiveness and the second being the cutting efficiency and what is cutting effectiveness basically it's the amount of two structure which you have removed in a certain period of time for example if bur a is able to remove 1 mm of two structure in 1 minute and if bur b is removing 2 mm of two structure in 1 minute then obviously bur b is considered to be more effective than bur a because in the same time it is able to remove more amount of two structure and then comes the cutting efficiency in cutting efficiency we basically see how much of energy you have to put to remove certain amount of two structure in that specific time for example if bur a uses one joule of energy to cut 1 mm of two structure and if bur b uses more than one joule of energy to remove the same amount of two structure then bur a is considered to be more efficient in cutting this two structure than bur b because it requires less amount of energy to cut the same amount of two structure now consider a scenario where you have a bur which is less efficient that means it is not able to cut two structure you can increase the effectiveness by applying more pressure on the two structure with this bur but what will happen your efficiency of the bur will reduce because you are trying to use more energy to cut the two structure now let's understand the cutting mechanism that is how the dental bur or diamond abrasives are able to cut the two structure When you touch a two structure with the high speed cutting tool it cuts the two structure by two mechanism the first being called as a brittle fracture and the second is the ductile fracture the brittle fracture means that there is a sudden very rapid cracking of the two structure which basically happens because of a tensile force which is applied on the two structure which forms subsurface cracks and these subsurface cracks undermine the two structure and then the whole portion of that two structure comes out and this happens very fast this type of cutting happens most commonly in the enamel this type of cutting happens in enamel better with diamond abrasives than bladed burs because the diamond abrasives have sharp edge they have a large negative rake angle and that's why the diamond abrasives are considered to be far better for cutting the enamel than the bladed burs and the second way of cutting the two structure by the instruments is by inducing formation of ductile fracture In ductile fracture the material doesn't crack rapidly first it undergoes plastic deformation and then it leads to the fracture and this type of fracture is generally seen in dentin ductile fracture in dentin are more efficiently induced by the dental burs that is the bladed instrument than the diamond abrasives because when you use a diamond abrasives to cut the dentin at high speed they have found that the dentin flows on the side rather than getting cut and that's why you should always use the diamond abrasives to cut the enamel and dental bird to cut the dentin the textbooks also say that if you want to prepare a punch cut that is the initial entry into the tooth preparation or if you want to do intracoronal cavity preparation or secondary retention and resistant features or for conservative preparation you should always prefer a bladed bur whereas if you are doing bevel or want a rough surface of two structure which can enhance the bonding of composite and for both extracoronal and intracoronal preparation you can use diamond abrasives but apart from all these differences there is one major important point when you use the dental bur or the diamond abrasive at low speed whether you cut the enamel or the dentin you will always end up cutting two structure by ductile fracture 
Now let's go to the second segment that is the hazards associated with high speed dentistry and as a clinician I do feel that all of us should know these hazards which can affect the patient and your health too the first hazard is its ability to damage pulp because when you use a high speed you are increasing the temperature of tooth and the textbook says that if the temperature of tooth while cutting increases more than 54 degrees celsius then the pulp can undergo irreversible pulp necrosis and that's why you should always maintain a cutting temperature of less than 45 degrees celsius and that is possible by using the water coolant when you are cutting the structure with high speed instruments and as mentioned in the last video the dental burrs specifically the carbide burrs are better for the pulp because they generate less heat compared to the diamond abrasive instrument. The second hazard which can happen during the use of high speed instruments is that you can damage the soft tissue and this happens during initial days of learning when you are concentrating so much on the tooth that you might unknowingly damage the lip or the tongue or the buccal mucosa of the patient. The high speed cutting can also lead to eye damage because a small piece of tooth structure or the the old restorative material can jump off the oral cavity and damage your eyes or your patient's vision and that's why protective glasses should be always recommended when you are using the high speed cutting. The next hazard is very important because most of the MCQs have appeared from this section and this is the ability of high speed dentistry cause hearing loss. Whether high speed affects your hearing depends on multiple factors. It depends on the frequency of sound, intensity, a susceptibility of individual and the duration of the sound. The intensity of the sound is generally expressed in decibels and the frequency is expressed cycle per second. Gen Generally in room we have a 20 to 40 intensity of sound which is routinely happening but when you use a high speed cutting tool that can increase the intensity of the sound which may range from 70 to 94 decibel. The textbook says that if a noise level goes more than 75 decibels and it ranges in frequency from 1000 to 8000 CPS then it may cause the hearing damage and that's why most of the committees recommend that you should use protective earwear if you have a noise level of more than 85 decibel and it is mandatory if the sound is more than 95 decibel in your practicing area. The last important aspect is that when you are using the high speed cutting it is important that you take inhalation precautions. The high speed cuttings form the aerosol and the mist. The aerosols are basically invisible particles which range from 500 micrometer to 5 micrometers and they remain suspended in your air for many hours. And the second being the mist which is basically a vapor of particles which have more than 50 micrometers and they remain suspended for less amount of time that is around 15 minutes. And the issue with this is that you may inhale and this can cause the respiratory damage and in certain cases like when you are removing the old amalgam restoration it can lead to mercury toxicity which should be prevented by taking proper inhalation precaution. So my dear Dear friends this concludes the series on the high speed cutting and I hope that you will check the earlier video which can help you to understand this topic better. If you have any other questions please mention in the comment section. If you like the video click the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and I will see you soon with few more videos on Aspire 32.